Hello, welcome, thank you for tuning in. Today is uh, December 21st of 2020. It is win winter solstice. Today is the shortest day of the year. Sun rose at around 7.15, 16 this morning, very early on. And it's going to set at around 4.30 p.m. After today, we begin to get more light very soon. This, uh, tomorrow the sun will be setting at 4.31 p.m. Then 4.32 where it, we will reach, reach June 21st of 2021 and that will be our longest day of the year and then the cycle begins again. I am here today to take a look at the exhibit that is installed directly in front over here. Some of you might recognize this uh, vantage point. This is the Morris Jumel Mansion and red-tailed hawk just flying by. The Morris Jumel mansion is the oldest mansion in Manhattan. It's been around since 1766 and an incredible historical connection. I've made more video tours that feature this incredible building. But today we're here to take a look at Covira. Covira is the name of this exhibit that is at the gate at the entrance to the Morris Jumel mansion. The gate traditionally is just a gate, but today as you can see it's decorated with these figures and these uh, garlands and also uh, names written on these, uh, on these yellow and orange sort of tape. We're going to explore what this is all about. Today is a very special day. It's been a very particular year, a lot happening in the world. This is a direct reminder to basically the people who have died from this tragedy, this nightmare that we are going through as a, as a collective experience all over the world. So you can see Covira, homage to the victims of the pandemic. And I'm going to get closer to it so that we can take a closer look as well. I also have a, this set up on a tripod, so we'll see how this fares, if I can make it a continuous shot. But the work is located in Upper Manhattan. Let me, let's make a 360 degree view so that we can form a better picture as to where it is that we are. This is looking east. This is now beginning to look north. Jumel Terrace is the name of this street over here and just up ahead is 162nd Street. You can see the names of the street up there. Let me try to see if I can get a better look at that. I think I better get away from the street. Jumel Terrace is the name of this particular street and then up in front here, as you can see there, is Sylvan Terrace. This is a beautiful setting. This is now looking west. And this is looking south. This is the second highest point in Manhattan. If there were no buildings here or no buildings in New York, we would have been able to see all the way down to the Bay of New York, which is the reason why this house was built here. So I mentioned this is Covira and the artist is Andrea Arroyo who has presented here before and in other public spaces uh, in this uh, northern Manhattan community. Not just here but in other areas as well. Let's see. Please bear with me, I also have some notes here so that I share everything. So if the camera goes out of focus, it's just that I'm trying to juggle a couple of things at the same time. So again, this is a reminder, a, a, a memorial to the people who have died from COVID, which right now tops or is close to 300,000 Americans and all over on a global scale. It's just incredible to talk about. And uh, what is it doing? It's basically giving us a visual aid so to be able to process what is going on. We are having to organize for a lot of decisions as we come to the holiday season 
but uh, we're still on the day-to-day -day processing all the loss and all the grief that we are going through. So in this homage, in this memorial, we have to look into what is it that a memorial does. A memorial implies grief, as we mentioned, and when we experience real grief, grief for something we really like, we invoke involuntary autobiographical memories, so meaning that we see things and experience things that remind us of our loss and of our grief. And since this is so new, it's going to be a very interesting reality moving forward as I don't think we're processing or taking this with the consideration that it needs to be taken because this, from the looks of it, is not necessarily going to get better. But we'll see what we all organize to come out of that. And this is one of those things. So this is why this is worth looking at. And in looking at this, we also get something that uh, symbolizes something that represents a passage between this world and the next. And we experience our reality very interestingly here in physical terms because we're in the city. I mean, these houses are kind of old, but not that old. These are early 20th century there, and these are late 19th century. But over here we go back to the 18th century. So going through this gate is like we're stepping through time and this is how this place needs to be experienced. There's a lot of literature over here that reflects on the on the history of this space. I'm not going to dwell too much the incredible connection to military history as well. And these sections, these I don't know what we, I would call it, what these are called, but uh, tapes, they are very much what you have are names of people who have died and these names have been written since the memorial was put up on display a couple of weeks ago and uh, will be running up until December 31st. You can send actually the name of a loved one or someone you know so that it could be written here. I'll include this in the uh, in the description of this video. If anyone is interesting to connect your loved one or someone you know to this very early memorial. I'm sure that in time uh, memorials will maybe be more permanent. This as you can see the material is pretty much plastic and these flowers these garlands that echo uh, that echo marigolds, and marigolds are the most iconic flower in the festival uh, del Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Andrea is of Mexican origin, and in her origin and in this beautiful visual detail to this, we get a very strong cultural connection to that incredible global phenomenon, because that's really what El Dia de los Muertos is. A global phenomenon now and it's interesting how this has been organized as a field of perception the top where the garlands are it's our it's almost heavenly like these garlands almost echo clouds and then looking into the body of the work basically we see these beautiful figures that have this angelic character to them and the essence of this image over here you can see how it has wings it's flowing on a cloud beautiful profile in this one here and the element that looks like a hand could also be a wing as well this almost looks like a swan more angelic figures over here and this one very nicely framing and embracing that gesture of em em embracing whatever is down below. There's an interesting three-dimensionality to this work, even though it's two-dimensional. Being here, you definitely pick it up. And more figures, more angelic figures looking down the signature of the artist over there as well. And the cityscape all the way at the very bottom.
and from the cityscape rising these images over here in this section here we see this one almost reclining on the on the moon what else do you see let me know in the comment sections Very soon this will be opened. Yes, hello, good morning. Good morning. Excuse me, I need help. No, no, no worries. Let me go here. There is some literature accompanying the display as well, as you see here. Covira Homage, Homenaje a las Víctimas de la Pandemia 2020. Técnica Mixta, 2 de noviembre, 31 de diciembre de 2020. Oh, information is also in English here. Homage to the victims of the pandemic 2020 mixed media from November 2nd to December 31st. Covida, homage to victims of the pandemic is an artistic tribute to the victims of the COVID-19 pandemic honoring the lives of people from the local community and around the world who have been impacted by and who have died of COVID-19. There's a QR code here where with your smartphone you can just pretty much connect to more and gain more of a virtual experience of this beautiful display. Oh, and this is the more traditional flag that, you, flag that you see installed by the Department of Parks. This is a public park in New York but it's operated by the Historic House Trust. Morris to Mel Mansion. Morris to Mel Mansion, yes. Do you work here? Do you mind being recorded? Uh, or what, what is this for? The for a blog, online. For a blog, um, I don't mind. I can't. I don't. I okay. can't spend very long. Um, okay. But yes, this is a project between Morris Jamal Mansion and the artist oh. Andrea Arroyo. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, and in case you or anyone else might be interested, mm -hmm. we have more information on our website. Perfect. About um, including some talks with the artist. Are those put up on the website itself? Yes. Cool. Morrisjamel.org. Cool. And um, you are also welcome to, I think that QR code is there for mm -hmm. name submission. We're, connect, oh. we're collecting names to be cool. added to ribbons awesome. from around the globe. Wow. And it will just be up until the 31st of December. Yes. And then my understanding is that um, Ms. Arroyo has scouted another location. Oh. Okay, we'll reinstall. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. You too. So there you go. You have the information. And if you know names, uh, please submit them so to develop this connection to this very powerful site. Again, this is one of the earlier memorials that we see memorializing this incredible trauma that we're going through as a society and the gate has just opened and when it's open I mean, you get this display here which looks very complete I wanted to make it here early so that we could see the gate while it's closed and this is the north gate I just show you the south gate and now this is the north gate it's a beautiful garden. Let's uh, actually take a look and see how it how it's looking. Let me just get my tripod here and then we'll walk through the garden itself. Take a look at the mansion. Again, I presented this area before, but again, there's always something new to uncover and exhibitions like this one. Definitely accomplished that mis mission. Definitely help in that process of getting people to come back here. It's a beautiful section and as you see the landscape is still covered in snow. Although it's not the kind of fun snow where you can play because it's gotten a little bit squishy or kind of wet too, hard in sections. But evidence of the amounts of fun that were had here just a couple of days ago when the snow fell. As you can see from that snowman there. And I guess the shape of the snowman reflects on the type of snow too. Like I'm walking on it right now and it sounds crunchy. 
impressive oak trees here as they rise from the white ground they look almost <laughs> as installations they don't look like well I mean I guess they fit nicely with the landscape considering that this is winter today it is the first day of winter impressive building there but if I wouldn't have been here we would have been able to look further south at one time all the way down to the harbor of New York this is the facade of the Jumeo mansion 1766 I don't want to go into too much detail I just want to walk through the garden so that we can take a look at it and see how it's looking this is beautiful no matter the season. All this mansion in Manhattan. Some benches. This is also the general atmosphere that we've had for time immemorial in this northern section of Manhattan but I'm sure that that will change as people begin to connect with the significance of this space and the type of experience that you can have here very connected to the times even though it's uh, such, an, such a, uh, an old building, an old structure administration is very, well, the public house trust and, uh, and the New York City Parks Department are very well aware of this reality. In fact, this is a reference to the Black Lives Matter movement, which is something that gained a lot of attention this year. And uh, the colors that you see here are the colors of the Pan-African flag, flag. That flag that is red, black, and green. This could be a whole topic in, in and of itself, but if you're watching, thank you for watching. I know it's getting to be a long video. I usually don't like to organize videos that are too long, but nevertheless, it's good to get this record. Beautiful bench design. The red is significant for the blood of the people. Black is symbolic of the color of the people's skin and green is symbolic of Africa, the motherland. It's the land. The Pan-African flag and then the other benches painted the traditional color. This is a very varied landscape. Right now it's looking pretty much the same but as you can tell from the shape of the of the branches of these trees, we have different species of trees here which makes it for a very pleasant experience to walk through this area in the springtime and throughout the summer that's the Bronx, that's looking east we could continue to walk down this promenade in the spring there are several roses there and then this sunken garden This sunken garden that was built, if I'm not mistaken, in the 1930s and this time piece here uh, directly at the center, this sundial. No shadow because it's very cloudy. We've been having very cloudy days the last couple of days. Beautiful trees though. This one is covered in this beautiful evergreen algae. Ah, not algae. Ivy. I don't know how good this is picking it up. So it's starting to be a... Well, it's almost now 20 minutes, but... It looks like the battery is okay. Uh, when you visit in the warmer weather, you can see how these plants look. Most of the plants here have these plaques, which tell you what they are. Some native species, and also some uh, garden plants, too, that are good for cooking, which would have been the type of herbs and plants that would have been grown when this used to be an operating farm back in the 18th century 
That's an outhouse there, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I'm gonna walk out this sunken garden here and then connect back to Covida. Again, it's going to be here only up until December 31st. If you live in New York, definitely check it out. Share it as well so that we can help create consciousness that we are actively engaging in processing this trauma that's going on in our lives. And that way we can continue to build hope. This marker here, back in time would have let you know when you travel, travel through this area where you found yourself. 11 miles from New York City. This was the outskirts of New York. New York at the time was pretty much below 14th Street. <laughs> this is a nice snowman here. The scarf is this caution tape. Well, that's the word that I was looking for. Over there where the names are written in bands of tape. Some of the trees here are very old. I wouldn't be surprised if this tree is nearly a hundred years old or over. We have some very old trees in the northern section of Manhattan. Sometimes we lose them to storms, as you can see with that trunk there. And amazing too, because a lot of these trees are just growing directly on top of rock, as you can also see with that tree there that came down. I don't know if it came down in 2012 with Hurricane Sandy, but it might have. There were a lot of trees that came down during Hurricane Sandy in 2012. This video is also going to be posted on the Morris Jumel Mansion dedicated blog post and the link will be given in the description if you'd like to visit and take a look at other video tours of this very area at different times of the year. A beautiful cardinal there. Oh, just flew away. Okay, overall I think good video depending on how the footage looks, if it gets too distracting with all the motions that make it a, might make it a little bit uncomfortable but the very special and significant showcasing Covida by Andrea Arroyo We were lucky to encounter the person who works inside, you can visit the mansion itself I'll also include a link to their website on this video's description on Facebook and on YouTube. For those of you watching on Facebook New Connections, welcome, thank you for joining us. We will be exploring more of New York through these guided video tours and those of you on YouTube subscribers, thank you for your continued connection and uh, New Connections, welcome. The names, if we were to stop and read them, we'll see that these are names from all over the world. Or names that originate in parts from all over the world, which is also a reflection of what New York is. And a reflection of how this is affecting all of us. I just saw a red-tailed hawk and there's a little squirrel over there up on the tree. So cool. Also join me on my video tours. Tomorrow I have an event happening over in Central Park where we will be exploring the beautiful views surrounding the Belvedere in the park which is the main visual focus of the whole park actually. And also always check on the uh, Meetup page. I know that some of you may be watching from Meetup. Uh, on Meetup I organize events. Right now the events I'm putting together are happening virtually, but very soon it's possible to join me in person and explore these incredibly historic sites along 
others in this very rich neighborhood in the northern section of Manhattan. Thank you for your attention. For more videos, log on to 5dguide.com. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon or morning, depending where you are and when you are watching this video. Bye-bye.